Isn't it ironic that uh, radiation can cause cancer and here radiation is also curing cancer? I was the only one female doctor in the entire cancer hospital. Is it a shock kind of treatment? A current kind of thing which passes through your body and all? Especially this uh, MR Linac what we have. So welcome to the program, Dr. Sunita Ma'am, and it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank you. So tell us something, radiation oncology, it is such an intense and unique field. How did you choose this uh, pathway? I mean, was it a difficult choice or it just happened? I think, uh, I mean, getting into oncology was totally my dad's choice. In MBBS, we never knew that there is a branch which exists like that because that was not there in Osmania Medical College at that time. After joining, it was totally my choice that uh, I will stick to this branch because majority of the patients, if you see on the radiation machines, because I did from MMJ Cancer Hospital, those days like 25 years back, it was the only one uh, major cancer hospital in Hyderabad. So then I decided like, uh, and it was a male dominated field. I was the only one female doctor in the entire cancer hospital. Around 20 doctors used to be there, but I was the only one single female doctor. So how did that, that feel? So that was a scary thing at the uh, outset. But uh, then uh, I think I slowly made my, uh, I mean, presence in the entire hospital. So radiation and a, is it like a laser beam light coming and fighting with the cancer cells? Yes. So initial days, like people used to have a fear in their mind that radiation is something like a current treatment or a shock treatment. In fact, when uh, uh, I was a student, and even for that matter, today also, patients keep coming and asking us, is it a shock kind of treatment, a current kind of thing which passes through your body and all. But originally, if you see, it is just like taking a simple x-ray or a CT scan. Okay, so patient will not even know that something is happening within their body while the treatment is happening. So nothing is visible nothing, externally. Nothing is visible. So maybe you can call it as a laser treatment or a light treatment or something like that rather than calling it as a current treatment or a shock treatment. Yeah. So does the laser or, or uh, the radiation therapy affect only the cancer cells or it even um, affects the healthy cells? Now what we have is majority of the hospitals, they do have the IGRT techniques, which is the highest form of radiation, which is available anywhere in other hospitals. Okay. And we do have the, uh, the most advantageous uh, type of treatment, which is adaptive therapy now, where uh, we do it with either CT based or an MR linac based uh, uh, radiation. Okay, so these are the highest forms of radiation where you can target only the tumors and, uh, and I mean, uh, the surrounding the normal stitches will be getting as less dose as possible. Yeah. That reduces a lot of side effects, especially these patients, you know, like we have achieved so much in cancer treatments, especially the kind of uh, surgeries we have, the kind of uh, newer molecules in terms of chemotherapy, immunotherapy and all the survival of these patients has been very long compared to what it was earlier. So this is all about external radiation, what we were talking about. Yeah. What is internal radiation? So internal radiation, as of now, major part of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, brachytherapy. Internal radiation is nothing but brachytherapy. Brachytherapy is a type of treatment where you go directly into the tumor there. Okay. So it is like a kind of surgery. Okay. It's a kind of invasive process. External radiation will not even touch the patient. You will just... Uh, make the patient lie down and uh, take the treatment and go out. Internal radiation is a bit of invasive procedure. Majority of the times this is followed for the cervical cancers, endometrial cancers and then uh, some kind of soft, soft tissue tumors or some uh, 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 partly to one or two head and neck cancers. So this is a very highly skilled process and a specialized process and the entire team, almost all 10 to 12 people will be involved in this team and this is done painless nowadays. There's no pain at all because we do it under anesthesia. 
Do patients ever ask you if they would be radioactive or would they glow after this internal radiation therapy? Yes. So these are only when the treatment is delivered through the needles, that is the time the radioactivity will be there. The 10 minutes, nobody will be there around that patient. Okay. The rest of the times, once the needle is removed after the treatment, the patient will not be radioactive anymore. But isn't it ironic that uh, radiation can cause cancer and here radiation is also curing cancer? Yes, <laughs> it's a double-edged sword. That's the reason why we say it has to be as less as possible. So, I mean, if you deliver larger amount of radiation to the surrounding normal structures, the low doses areas where you feel like, okay, they will get healed. They will get healed, but in future, they might get a chance of developing into a second cancer. So that is the reason why we have to keep our principle. So we call it as Alara principle. So as low as possible. So are there any little tricks that patients can follow to help them feel better after a therapy? After the therapy, the most important thing is the skin becomes bit sensitive, especially if you are uh, undergoing for a breast cancer or for the uh, head and neck cancers. So head and neck cancers also we see sometimes the skin peels off, the skin becomes darker and all. So it is very important to not to rub the skin during that time. And then it is also more important to keep the area dry and uh, I mean a little bit of dryness will be there. In that case you can apply a bit of moisturizer which your doctor will prescribe you. You are not supposed to use any kind of cosmetics or any kind of makeup or anything on that area. Okay, and then avoid uh, all these uh, uh, what you call perfumes or body deodorants and all because these might interact with the radiation particles and that might cause again more uh, of skin reactions during this. Then the second most important thing during radiotherapy is maintaining a proper hydration and then frequent small meals is something which we recommend during these days and, and uh, moreover do not eat anything. Do, do not binge eat after 7 o'clock in the evening. Okay. So that is one thing which I usually suggest my patients to follow. Yeah. So what's the most exciting innovation in radiation oncology that we are seeing today? Okay. So the most exciting uh, uh, thing which is happening now in radiation oncology is adaptive therapy. Okay. Adaptive therapy is like uh, even during the treatment is getting delivered. If you see, there are some changes which are happening internally. See, externally, you will not see any kind of movement. You feel like everything is normal. and uh, But sometimes what happens is majority of these patients are elderly patients also. You see, uh, some patients will have the rectal gas which will be filling. And uh, once the rectal gas is there, what happens is it goes and pushes the uterus or the prostate for um, in men. So in those cases, if you can do your adaptation in such a way that all these things are taken into account in order to deliver the treatment, then we can give the least possible side effects for this patient. The radiation oncology has always been, I mean, we have achieved a lot in terms of cures and all, but now it is a time for us to give a maximum possible uh, uh, what you call cure along with best possible uh, uh, side effects okay least possible side effects and uh, um, in fact uh, um, it's like uh, it's a it's a visual delight you know when you are uh, seeing the patients treated like till now we never uh, saw how the bean goes and delivers and especially this uh, mr linac what we have we can see the patient's treatment also getting delivered to the tumor and in fact some of the attenders they love to come and sit with us while they are delivering the treatment and they are so happy with the kind of uh, precision what we are uh, able to deliver for these patients and uh, you know see uh, what I personally feel is the journey has to be smooth and comfortable okay the outcome is something majority of the times it's it may not be in our hands also it it depends on the stage and the kind of cancer we have and all but the journey has to be smooth and effective that is what is my thing and this is one of the technology which is yes. helping most of us yeah. that's really a positive uh, thing to know about and finally, Dr. Sunita, what is that message you would like to tell our viewers or for someone who is thinking about radiation oncology or is scared about 
radiation oncology what is that message you'd like to share with them yes so first thing is uh, uh just like any other fields just like any other field uh, this field is uh, some uh, field where it is a machine dependent uh, branch okay you have to be attached to one hospital and then uh, all your patients will be trickling there and once you gain your name your patients will come to you you may not run around for the patients and the kind of satisfaction you have for this uh, for the treatment with this uh, for this patients is something which is unparalleled like uh, um uh, i mean uh, these patients will become almost all like your relatives it's not like other cardiology or neurology patients where once you are getting treated and you are discharged from the hospital you forget about everything but these are the patients who are called recurring patients if not for any other problems they come to you for regular follow ups every 3 months 6 months just so till they are alive and till you are alive these patients you you kind of uh, uh, i mean uh, Uh, make a family bond with them and uh, so this is a most satisfying branch in my opinion and uh, please do take up anyone who has a passion to treat the patients with uh, uh, with this uh, kind of uh, high end technology should definitely come and uh, come forward and take this field especially women do have a higher uh, share as a radiation oncologist Thank you Dr. Sivar it was wonderful interacting with you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>